Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Operation Epic, my video series on YouTube primarily aimed toward Catholic teenagers, although anyone else is welcome to watch it if they wish. And I told you that I would get into popular culture and try to relate it to the Catholic faith. And I believe this video in particular will really relate to teenagers because I'm going to draw from one of the most unlikely sources you can imagine to relate it to the faith. And that is none other than Super Smash Brothers. I also have the Wii U version, but this one happened to be at hand. And as you can see, my 3DS is well loved from spending a lot of time on this. And I know what you're probably thinking is, Super Smash Brothers, really? A game where people try to beat each other up? for the fun of it, you're going to compare that to the Catholic faith? Well, in all honesty, I'm not really trying to compare it in an allegorical sense, because if that was the case, this would not exactly be the best example. You know, characters beating each other up rather than helping each other doesn't really seem like the gospel message, does it? But what we have to realize here is the deeper meaning behind having all these Nintendo characters and a few guest characters like Sonic the Hedgehog coming together in one universe. And neither is considered like better or worse than the other. I mean, you can have your opinions on like, well, I think Jigglypuff shouldn't have even existed since the first game, but yet that other character, uh, I personally have a thing for Cloud, um, is great. But you may have also noticed that Smash Brothers puts a lot of ridiculous scenarios into there. Like you've got, um, you've got villains like Ganondorf and heroes like Link, and yet in some matches they can actually work together. And it's like, well, Link kind of defeats Ganondorf in the Zelda series, so how are they working together? You could say it's in a sense an allegory of what the communion of saints will be like in heaven. You know, the in heaven. Of course, you've got the greatest people that ever lived. Like, you know, you've got the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph, but you've also got really rotten sinners that decided to turn their lives to God, and now they get to sit at the heavenly feast where they're considered to be just as great as people that were great on earth. So in the same way, you know, Masahiro Sakurai, he always talked about balance between the characters. Like, you've got you've got this lovable puffball named Kirby and yet it's totally possible to clobber Ganondorf you know the king of darkness in a fight and you know same thing with characters like Princess Peach you know she's always being rescued in the Mario games but yet she can totally lay the smack down on everyone in the game in this so Another thing to keep in mind is that each of the worlds are vastly represented in the series. And the game does a great job of making sure that they all fit well together. Like you've got the world of Animal Crossing where everything is peaceful and friendly and you know you're in the games most of the time you sort of spend time fishing or collecting bugs. And then you've got the Fire Emblem series which is a turn-based strategy game that focuses on warfare and political drama. So. But yet, you'll notice that neither series is underrepresented. You've got plenty of songs, stages, trophies, items, you name it, they have it. Okay, maybe he's a little bit biased toward Kid Icarus, but he did direct it. I mean, he's got to have a little bit of pride for his creation, right? So, the message we can gain here is not necessarily that I would recommend playing Smash Brothers as a way of like learning more about your faith, like I might for stuff like Harry Potter but that Smash can give us a picture of how in God's kingdom, God doesn't necessarily single us out because we're too much of this or too much of that. God's not going to look at me and say, well, Paul, you're, you're, you're nowhere near as great as like these awesome public speakers or these other YouTubers that can put on much more elaborate videos than I can because as you can see I have no special effects if I do it's usually practical effects like you know showing this thing to you guys but yet God has given us each individual talent and I think that's the beauty of Smash Brothers because even though each character has a fairly specific 
set of moves. Like they all have smash attacks. They all have grabs. They all, you know, can at least perform two jumps. But there's also a uniqueness to each character. Like each character has four special moves. Like, you know, Mario, he can toss his fireballs. But then you've got Ike where he has no projectile attacks at all. He just mostly uses his sword for everything. But yet they're still balanced. And they still play a role in the game. You know, the, the Wii U version has an event mode where you're given specific characters to accomplish a specific task. And so that's how God views us as the body of Christ. You know, St. Paul talks about in his letter to the Corinthians how even though the body has many parts, we are all meant to serve a common goal, and that's to finish or to perf perfect God's mission. You know, Jesus says in the Gospel of John, I have set you an example, and you will do greater things than these because I abide in you and you in me. So, St. Paul elaborates about that further by saying, well, the foot can't say because I'm not a hand, I'm not worthy. So in the same way I may be gifted with speaking, you may not be. You might be gifted at math, which I certainly am not. I'm surprised I can even get through Fire Emblem without having everyone get killed. And we're all asked to use those talents for a common good. So just as all the characters that are so vastly different from each other, like you've got the peaceful villager in Animal Crossing and the swords guys in Fire Emblem, they're all equipped for fighting, just like we are all equipped with our unique gifts for serving others and showing love to the community. So my challenge to you upon reflecting on Smash Brothers is to to note that our differences aren't necessarily hindrances. I know that's been a bit of a struggle for me is oftentimes, I, I won't get too into that because I, I know this is aimed primarily at teenagers, but I have had some self-image issues occasionally and sometimes I wonder like, am I not as good as someone else because they might like look better than me or you know, they, they might have it more convenient. Like, no, that's not the case at all because I have my own gifts and maybe God has given me crosses, but perhaps he can make something good out of those crosses. So for instance, I'm quite the introvert, but yet because of that, because I'm here alone in my room talking to a computer, that allows me to be more energetic than I might normally be if say I were presenting this at like a crowd or to a live audience of teenagers. So that's a way of allowing me to use my weakness and find a way to use it for God's good. So if you ever feel like you're the Jigglypuff, ugh, such a pathetic character. If you ever feel like you're the Jigglypuff in the world where you're just so, you feel so useless that you're wondering, why am I even here? Realize that if Jigglypuff can take down Ganondorf in a fight, you can certainly make a difference in the world even if no one else realizes it except for God alone. So that's all I have to say on the subject of Smash. Um, remember that with Lent coming up, try not to get too addicted to it, because believe me, it happens. And to always strive for the kingdom first and foremost. So until my next video, God bless, keep the faith, and stay epic. Talk to you later.